what's up everybody um today we are going to be taking a look at my new 35 millimeter slr camera the nikon f2 so i think it's worth mentioning why i decided to buy the f2 and i was looking online at possibly looking at leica m6s and so i was googling like is it worth it what lenses to get all that stuff and i came across this article that was published this year uh this person was very very into their m6 so much so that the comments uh seemed to think it was a little pretentious the comment section was a gold mine uh, and one of the things that i saw let me actually just pull it up blah 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 if this is what happens to you once you own one of these i'll just keep using my nikon f2 for now ugh and i thought that's interesting. Nikon F2. I know nothing about this. And so I started Googling and it seemed like people really liked the F2. It's been around since the seventies. So I thought, why not? I looked it up. It's actually only like 200, like 230, 250 bucks. Um, and I had the only 35 millimeter camera besides the X pan that I had used was the Pentax K1000. And so I was tired of that system and I kind of wanted something new. So I thought, why not? I'll try the F2. Let's see what happens. So another reason why I decided to get this camera was because I was interested in the lenses. And the lens that this camera came with was the Nikkor 50mm 1.4. Um, and overall, it's a really solid lens. It's built like a tank. One of the ways that this camera was an improvement from the original F model was the faster shutter. So you can shoot at one two thousandth of a second uh which i don't personally i've never actually shot at that fast of a shutter on film so and i don't think i did for this video actually so maybe i will in the summer i don't know but if that's something that you care about there you go so i just want to start by saying that these photos that you see in this video um i just kind of walked around to figure out what the camera could do what i thought what i felt while shooting it um i've been in quarantine in philly since uh march um and so i just took like the past two or three months walking around they're not any photos that are worth framing or selling or anything like that um but i just kind of wanted to see what it could do So to start things off, I want to talk about what I had a big issue with or what caused some problems in my mind, which was the meter. Um, it's attached to the top of the camera. It's a, the, a detachable meter prism system. It's uh, called the Nikon DP1, I believe. But the sensor used for metering is a cadmium sulfide sensor. It, it just basically detects between the lightest and the darkest part of your scene or what it what's being shown to the sensor. Um, and it's got the, I think it's called a galvanometer uh, that goes between the plus and the minus. It's your standard light meter that you'd find in like a Pentax or a Canon camera. Um, but it was super inconsistent. And I don't know why, I think maybe because it's from the seventies and perhaps the sensor is just crapping out. I'm not really sure. Um, 
but you can detach that part from the camera. So uh, you've probably seen on Instagram, like some of these 35 millimeter cameras that have the waist level finder. This has that. So you can, you can still take photos without the meter, um, but that kind of defeats the purpose of why I wanted the camera or why I wanted a good 35 millimeter camera, which was I wanted to be able to walk around and quickly take photos. Uh, I think that's the whole purpose for why you'd get a 35 millimeter camera is because medium format lends itself to slower, uh, very focused metering workflows. Um, and this ended up being kind of the same. So with these photos that I took uh, in this video, um, I tried to only use the internal meter built into the camera. And so what I would do is I would take the photo and it turned out that a lot of them were slightly underexposed. Um, but while I was out shooting, I would take the photo and then I would check the meter uh, with my phone. And then I kind of found myself doing this after every photo I would take because I started getting paranoid that I wasn't actually taking the right shot or I wasn't exposing properly. Um, and so then I started getting paranoid that I was just wasting rolls of film. Now, in order to access the meter, uh, you just flip up the uh, advancement lever. So when you do that, you can see a little red dot, which means that you can now meter for the shot. This basically is just a way to save battery. So I do really appreciate that about the F2. Now it does have a self timer. So if you are wanting to take self portraits or maybe just if you don't have a cable release for long exposures, you could do it that way as well. But in the middle of shooting this review, um, I decided to kind of take on a challenge. And one of the things about me is that I really love running. I'm a big runner and I decided for May, I would try to run 200 miles uh, just over the course of the month. But I wanted to document the whole process, meaning like before and after the run, kind of how I was feeling during it, anything that happened really throughout that month. Um, I did not make it the whole month doing the photos. Uh, I bailed like halfway through because I would get home from the runs. I'd be too tired and I just stopped caring. Um, but I did manage to take a significant amount of pictures with the F2. Uh, usually they were of myself, but I did find shooting with the F2 in that aspect fun because it was, it wasn't medium format. So I could take like five or six, you know, experimental shots and I didn't worry about wasting half of the roll. So maybe I'm just talking about loving 35 millimeter instead of medium format, but anyway. Reminds me of a story. So the biggest lesson that I took from reviewing this camera was what I actually want from a 35 millimeter camera. Do I want to stop and take the time to meter my shots? Do I want something that I don't even have to choose the settings at all, like a point and shoot? Or do I want to be able to have more control to be able to uh, expose it however I want, but be able to throw it up in a, in a second and get a good meter and take the shot, um, which I think what I would want in a camera is the latter. Um, so am I gonna keep this camera? Probably. So that's it for today, guys. I uh, hope you liked this review. If you wanna see more camera reviews or film stock reviews, let me know in the comments below. Uh, I know it's been a while since I uploaded, but things have been weird with, you know. Um, anyway, I'll see you in the next one.